What's going on guys, Gray here, and what if I told you that you've been playing Gunslinger all wrong this whole time? Would you believe me? It's fine if you don't, but I think by the end of this video, I might change your mind. As you may already tell by the thumbnail, this isn't just another generic Dragon Shadow or Stompies type of build. There's another exotic that is heavily slept on that is made just for Gunslinger, Athri's Embrace. We're going to talk all about this exotic and how you should use it and incorporate it, but first, let's touch on the subclass itself. Gunslinger has long been one of my favorite subclasses to play in Destiny 2, specifically Bottom Tree. Regardless of meta shifts, stasis, or OP new exotics, I've always felt at home playing this subclass, and there's a number of reasons why. One of these reasons is the fact that the subclass as a whole revolves around rewarding your gun skill and works passively to improve the way your weapons feel just by getting kills. One of the key perks on Bottom Tree is Knock Em Down, where precision kills give you a buff that increases the stability and handling of all of your weapons. So you get one kill and the feel of your entire arsenal improves. As long as you continue to land precision kills, you can keep this buff rolling constantly. It's a really strong perk to have working at all times in the background, making your weapons just feel and perform better all the time. Next, we also have the perk Practice Makes Perfect, where every single precision hit reduces the cooldown of your super. Keyword hit and not kill. Just by engaging enemies and landing precision shots, you are rapidly gaining super energy. Another perk on the tree is Line em Up, which enables precision damage from Golden Gun. That's big because you can shut down supers easily by hitting a really forgiving headshot with Golden Gun. On top of that, each precision hit extends the duration of your super and buffs the damage of your Golden Gun. Keeping this in mind while utilizing your super will allow you to get the most out of it every time. And finally, we have our melee ability, my favorite in the entire game, the Weighted Knife. This knife has a short wind-up animation, but is capable of precision damage and will one-shot any guardian to the head. It's extremely fun when you take the time to master it, and you can really bait common peak locations for other players, and it feels amazing doing so. Also, when you get a precision kill, it will immediately refund your throwing knife. And that's going to lead us to our exotic of choice for bottom tree, Athri's Embrace. I know, I know, it's not Stompies and it's not Dragon Shadow, but hear me out, this offers more utility than Stompies, and we already have handling and stability buffs intrinsically from the subclass, so there's no need for Dragon Shadow either. Athri's Embrace is an incredible exotic that hunters got access to a few seasons back. They allow your throwing knife to bounce up to two times off of any surface, and rapid precision hits with any weapon grants a buff that increases the damage of our throwing knife. And the buff ain't no slouch. The knife will now body shot kill any guardian and can precision kill any super in the game. On top of that, the duration stacks up to 30 seconds and can constantly be refreshed for almost constant uptime. While that's a nice benefit, the real fun comes from the sort of hidden aspect of this exotic. While you have the buff, bouncing the knife off any surface will allow it to track like crazy. You don't even have to think about the angle as long as you get the bounce right. If there's someone around the corner after the first or second bounce, the knife will literally track to them and kill them. It seems to improve dramatically with each bounce, and the second bounce is like a heat-seeking missile. You can see some clips where I just bounce the knife knowing it will clean up whoever is around that next corner. It takes some practice to learn how to really get the most out of it, but if you give it the time it really deserves, this will quickly change from a gimmicky exotic to a fluid part of your loadout. And while this is a really strong exotic, you still might not be getting the most out of it depending on the loadout you are running. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing for more content like this and leave a like below to let me know that you're liking the format. If this video gets 50 likes, I'll do a YouTube short covering my full transmog breakdown on this build. We all know that fashion is the real end game, am I right? Now, I can hear the dad gamer comments already, but I honestly believe there's no better primary to pair with this exotic than a pulse rifle. 
Landing just one burst with a pulse will proc the strength and knife buff, allowing you to bounce your knife like a gangster all the time without even having to think about it. If you're using a weapon like a hand cannon, it takes a little more work to get the perk rolling, and in some cases, you may not even be able to proc it off of one guardian. Whereas a pulse rifle will proc off of one precision burst, and getting that two burst kill will let you walk away with a nice timer already going on the knife. While any pulse rifle will work well with this, there is one that simply stands far above the rest, the messenger. Not only does this pulse have amazing stats, but it is also a member of arguably the strongest pulse rifle archetype in the game, high impacts. These pulses allow for quick and clean two burst kills at any time. There are a number of strong high impact pulses, such as Stars in Shadow or Cold Denial, but as I'm sure you've noticed from the background gameplay, there's a little perk called Desperado that puts the messenger in a league of its own. Desperado used to be a pinnacle perk that was tied exclusively to the Redrick's Broadsword and Redrick's Claymore pulse rifles. After getting a precision kill and reloading, you increase the fire rate of your pulse to that of a rapid fire pulse, all while keeping the same damage profile of a high impact. This allows for an insanely fast optimal TTK of 0.47 seconds. You can see me absolutely shredding people with it in the background footage. Another benefit of Desperado is that it can be chain refreshed. As long as you keep landing precision kills, even with Desperado proct, you can reload and get a fresh buff every single time. It is an absolute top tier perk. And while it is locked behind trials, if you ever see the messenger up at three wins, I highly encourage you to dive in and go after a few rolls if you can. It has become my favorite primary in the game right now. Putting all of this together is so seamless with Bottom Tree Gunslinger. Not only are you gaining super energy off each precision hit, but getting a precision kill will buff the stability and handling of all of your weapons, and you'll be proccing Desperado on Messenger at the same time, all while giving yourself a heat-seeking, wall-bouncing throwing knife ready to get you free kills at any moment. All of it works together and it's fantastic. Every aspect of this loadout and subclass lends itself into another perk of this setup. It is a ridiculous amount of synergy and it all happens by doing the one thing in Destiny we all love to do, simply shooting our damn weapon. To me, that's what Gunslinger is supposed to be. A master marksman capable of popping off with whatever weapon is in their hands, combined with a few tricks up their sleeves. Now when it comes to choosing a special weapon with this, I prefer to use a close range weapon to cover my bases, and I've really been enjoying using Duality, 7th Seraph CQC, and Found Verdict to mix it up instead of just being Frankie Fellwinter. This choice is really up to you, so use whatever you're comfortable with. In the heavy slot, I prefer using an LMG as it does allow us to land precision hits, giving us more super energy. Here I'm using the Vogue LMG with Thresh on it to squeeze even more out of it when those times come up. Looking at our stats and armor mods, we do get to break a few of the classic rules we usually see regarding stat distribution. With Bottom Tree Gunslinger, we don't really need to worry about having a huge amount of intellect since we are generating so much super energy passively. It doesn't hurt, but I would prioritize other stats a little bit more. Personally, I go after tier 10 recovery first, allowing me to re-enter fights faster. You're gonna be peak shooting a lot with a pulse rifle, so you're definitely gonna take chip damage from time to time. Then I would focus on mobility as much as possible. This will improve our strafe speed while dueling and help any of us ex-stompy addicts overcome the difference in jump feel without them. After that, don't slouch on your strength stat. While I would recommend using Gambler's Dodge to get your knife back quickly when needed, having a high strength stat will also help fill the gaps if you do happen to miss your knife throw. As far as mods, the most important two are Powerful Friends and Radiant Light. These mods give us plus 20 mobility and plus 20 strength simply by slotting them into our armor. That's all you have to do to get huge stat gains easily. 
Do not go into Crucible without these two mods. And finally, fill out your armor with Pulse Rifle and Special Weapon mods and whatever stat mods you can fit to flush out your stats. A lot of people would call this a sort of off-meta build, but the reality is, now that Stasis has been nerfed, builds like this just have the breathing room that they need to finally shine. Spectral Blades may be an incredible subclass option for Hunters, but I will forever be a Gunslinger main and I will die on that hill. You can take it as far as your skill will let you, and while there are stronger options out there, it's the player that makes this subclass powerful. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll give this build a shot on your Hunters. Take off those Stompies for a few games, and I promise you won't regret it. Once you land a bouncing throwing knife around a corner that kills a behemoth titan, you're never going to want to take these off. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I'll see you in the Crucible.